Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and I'm super excited that you're here today because I'm going to fulfill a request from our Facebook group to do a video on uh, customizing your receipt. So if you're not in the Facebook group yet, you can certainly request videos over there. Go ahead and click in the link down in the description below and you get over to the Facebook group. You can ask questions, talk about errors or workflows or whatever you want to know about QuickBooks Point of Sale. People such as me and other point of sale users will be there to answer your questions. And if you're on YouTube today, go ahead and hit subscribe and get all the latest videos coming at you all the time. Okay, so somebody really wanted to know exactly how to, uh, you know, edit or customize their receipt. So we're going to go right into the uh, print designer and show you exactly how to do that. First, I am going to point out that if you go on the file menu and you head to the setup interview uh, this first tab right here is where you are going to enter your business information as well as miscellaneous other information that you would like to see on the receipt so that'll be your first step in sort of customizing your receipt I mean you just you want this info in here otherwise it's not going to show up on your receipt uh, the second thing I am going to point out in a similar manner is if you go on preferences and then company I believe and you head here under general to store info uh, you see the same information here so you can enter the same information I just pointed out right here but the added benefit of going here is that you can actually choose a logo and add the logo into QuickBooks point of sale that logo will end up on your receipt as well so that is a second step in customizing your receipt you can throw your own graphics or logo in right there now let's get to the real print designer area so we can really customize our receipt we're gonna go on the file menu one more time we're gonna go into tools and then print designer and right away the first document type that we have come up is sales receipt so you have a few choices here 40 column are gonna be the kind of receipt that comes out of an actual receipt printer with really long receipt tape some people call it and then all of the ones that start with letter are gonna be your full-size regular eight and a half by eleven printer size so you can print out receipts on a full-size printer if you do not have a receipt printer uh, I'm gonna stick to the actual cash register type receipt and there's a few default templates to choose from and you can kinda see in the little example here what the differences might be uh, the regular one is gonna show uh, like the name uh, second one is going to highlight the alternate lookup column, like which I usually use for part numbers, so you might want part numbers in there. Uh, the third default is just going to tell you what department it's from. Uh, the next one is called Description 2, and that will have an actual description field uh, on the second line, it looks like. And then the last one here. Uh, automatically has starts out with the item number if that's important to you so these are just some defaults but let's dive right in I am going to choose 40 column and you can you can jump right in and start modifying the 40 column one but it's probably going to be my recommendation to make a new copy and the reason is then you don't lose the default uh, template and if you screw anything up you can always go back to the default and make another copy and so here we are of course this is really zoomed out you can hardly see anything so I'm gonna zoom in and we're just gonna head right down here so each and every object on your receipt template is something you can either move or modify or delete some of these are like a grouped set of fields and so you're probably going to want to leave a lot of this up here at the top like you know this tells the date and time and what receipt it is and what station it came out of 
Uh, if you're on multi-store, it says which store it came out of. That's all very useful information, and I would probably leave that. The next three here, these are situational. It's either going to be, um, these are only going to show up on certain receipts. So merchant copy is going to come out of a credit card receipt. Reversed is for a reversal receipt. Reprinted is when you reprint it from the history. Uh, the next couple of pieces of information here, this is that information that you filled out uh, on the previous pages I showed you along with your store name uh, let's head on down here now there's certain special receipts where you do put in bill to information or ship to information and so these will only show up if you're actually putting in that information in those specific areas of the make a sale screen uh, the next area here, customer PO, I believe if, you, if your customer is specified as a company, there is a PO field, and so you can fill that in. This will only show up. A lot of these um, fields only show up if you actually enter this information into a special spot. Uh, cashier should always show up because normally you're, well, your cashier is logged in, hopefully. Uh, if you have no users or employees set up and you don't have user logon set up, then this may not show up. But you should make employees and you should probably have them clocking in and you should probably have them logged in as themselves. So that way, uh, if you're looking at a past receipt that got screwed up, you can tell who screwed it up or, <laughs> or what have you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, you see this was all in the header up here. Now we have a section here called body. And the real difference is this header is going to show up on every single receipt. And then for body, this is a repeating section. And so what you see here is you can see kind of uh, what it has for one item. So we have three lines here signifying one item. And of course, on your receipt, you're going to scan multiple items. So every single item that shows up on the receipt is going to have these three lines over and over and over again. But it's just showing you one. Now this is very important. This is the number one place where I think people probably want to customize what they are seeing. You are going to double click on this section and this will bring up kind of an editor which tells you exactly what you want to put for each and every item that gets rung up. So, uh, on and you have three lines to work with so that's a lot of space to put in specific information. And if you want to save paper and save receipt space, you can just put it down to two lines or one line. Uh, most people are going to want at least two lines, I would say. So in our first line, which is highlighted currently in red, we have the item, which is like the item name. And then we have quantity, price, and then extended price, which means, you know, if they're buying five of it, it's if they're buying five of these baseball things at 523 then the extended price is 2615 makes sense comes out as one line and multiple quantities and then the very end here we have the tax and that's that's not actually telling them what the tax is but it's a little T or sometimes it's a little N and that either means the item is being taxed or not being taxed and that's how you can tell what is taxable and that's according to how your inventory and your item is set up, of course. So all of these things are pretty normal, I would say, uh, to have on the first line. It's, it's the total basic information. You almost have to have that. Now on the second line here, you do see some spacers. Uh, and this is so that it is indented just a little bit. And you can tell items apart from each other with a little indent empty space. Now, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, not, a lot of <laughs> not a lot of items are going to have this di diameter or face size. These are custom fields that I put in. Uh, they were actually originally size and attribute, and I changed the name of them, so now they are this. So let me just get rid of some of those, you know. Uh, you may just want to have uh, the discount and the discount name on the second line here and I see some people want to put on the third line maybe the um, discount what is it it's like discount description or something like that 
Where is it? Extended discount dollars, I guess. Or discount name, I guess, is maybe what they want down there. And so if they have a really, so you might stretch out this discount percentage and maybe down on the third line is where they want the actual discount name because their discount names might be kind of long. And so this is how you can add or remove different pieces of information from each and every line. Uh, let's say on number two, maybe I want the department or or that ALU field is pretty helpful if you ask me. Or maybe you want people to feel good. You want to put the MSRP, the fake price on there, and then they can say, oh, I got it for way cheaper. Hooray. Uh, let's see here. Vendor code can definitely help you know where it the product came from. Uh, let's do department code. And so that's over here. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit, but I'm going to move it up so that it's over to the left. This is the hierarchy, the order on each line, you know. So here we got the uh, the um, department code that helps us know where it came from, which department, you know. And then maybe maybe I want one more thing, and that could be the what? ALU field, is that in here somewhere? Should be in here. Item number might help. Let's just put the item number. And I'm gonna put that before the discount as well. So there we go, we've got the department and the item number. And then we've got a discount. And then the total disc, like this is only gonna show up if there is a discount. Otherwise, your line three won't even be there if there's no discount name. Uh, so we've done that. We hit OK. We can see it now uh, in the bigger format here. It's all spelled out exactly how we want it. Uh, these subtotals here, I'm going to say that you're probably not going to want to mess with this, but you can double click and you can get rid of some of the information here. Uh, tip, we can probably get rid of that. It actually doesn't show up unless you enter a tip anyway, so that should be fine. But here's a little example of what's going to come out for this section. And for some reason, if you want to get rid of something, you can. I would probably recommend keeping it all because that's that's pretty important information. Uh, and then we got a little section here. Amount tendered, change given, cash back. Also important information. And right here we've got the credit card information. And so a lot of this stuff only shows up if you're taking a credit card. Very important if you are, I would, if, if you're not sure about it, I would probably leave it alone. And you can see that this is all body footer stuff. And so all of this is kind of static, which means it doesn't change. Though the one, the body field here, I'm just gonna emphasize again, is like an expanding area. Depending on how many items you have, that is going to continue to expand. Uh, a lot of this stuff down here just either shows up or doesn't show up according to what you're doing with the receipt. The reward section only shows up if you earn a reward or have your rewards turned on. Shipping section only shows up if you are shipping something with shipping information. This is only if you have brought this over from a sales order. Um, and then this section right here is filled in from that little introduction uh, survey that I showed at the beginning of the video, you know. But you can, if you want to, you could put another static, like, text area here. I believe actually this might be one. Uh, field for retention reminder. Okay, I guess this. This is already set. I guess you can't change it, but if you wanted to, you could hit add text label and you could say uh, whatever you want. You're the best. And so you could, let's see, where did that end up? Here it is. So you could, and you could bring that down and put that wherever you want. You're going to have to space some stuff out to do it. I'm going to continue to go down here. So, you know, maybe I want to move this up a little. You can expand your, your entire area at the bottom if you want. 
and I'm just gonna stick that right here you know oops come on oh grab the wrong thing and sometimes I use the arrow keys because it's just easier to know what you're on and what you're grabbing so there I, I added a little text there and I did that under the add area once again just to let you know that was add text label you can also add other fields and groups of fields um, and other graphics if you want up here but otherwise that's it uh, this barcode down here is for doing a return I'd probably leave that um, and that is editing your receipt and I hope that helped you out if it did you can hit the like down below and if you have any questions or comments leave those as well last thing about this is you're gonna hit save and then since we made a copy of the other template it wants us to name it because this is a brand new one so I'm gonna say Peter receipt so we say okay to Peter receipt do we want to set this up to be the default print template for the future for sales receipts well if it's what you've chosen and what you want to do then yes this is going to make it print out on every receipt if you say no it's still going to be on the previous copy the one that you didn't like apparently so I'm going to hit, hit yes and we can see in here we got Peter receipt and if I go to file preferences workstation and look at the receipt template chosen in my documents and printers it should be set to Peter receipt there it is right at the top so there you have it. You have yourself an excellent day now. Bye-bye.